The Galaxy S22 Ultra was definitely the smartphone of the year for a lot of people last year. I mean, it had that beautiful design, amazing cameras, great performance, great battery life, and even an inbuilt stylus. So it would only make sense for the S23 Ultra to be a significant upgrade over that and bring even more features, right? Well, not really. I honestly think Samsung peaked with the S21 Ultra. Not much has changed since that device, which came out two years ago at this point. It still has a great design. The camera quality didn't improve much with the S22 Ultra, neither did the battery life. The only difference was the addition of the inbuilt stylus, and a lot of people even still preferred the design of the S21 Ultra, MKBHD included. And that's because it was more comfortable to hold in the hand, and it even had a more distinct yet elegant camera bump. Anyway, I won't digress. If you're not really looking for something completely out of the ordinary like a Galaxy Fold, for example, and you're currently using an S21 or S22 Ultra, then I don't really think the S23 Ultra is going to be worth the upgrade. Here's why. Honestly, the S22 Ultra was almost perfect, but seeing as it was released almost a year ago at this point, some of the hardware might have gotten a little outdated and if having top of the line hardware is something that is very important to you then you might definitely be considering the s23 ultra oh but keep in mind that the s22 ultra is definitely going to experience some massive price cuts when the s23 ultra gets released and i'll be talking about that a little bit more later in the video first of all let's talk about how the device looks you can tell from several leaked images and even renders that the s23 ultra is going to be very similar in design and build quality to the S22 Ultra. I think it's going to be fun to compare the both of them and see which devices made fewer changes, the S22 to S23 Ultra or the iPhone 10 to iPhone 10 S. The S23 Ultra is still going to have the boxy design, reminiscent of the Note series. It is still going to come with the S Pen, of course. It's still going to have the same camera arrangement and the display is still going to be slightly curved. And I know that's going to upset a lot of people because apparently people don't really like the curved displays anymore. Personally, I think it's really cool and it's one of the things I miss after upgrading from my S21 Ultra to the Galaxy Z Fold 3. But anyway, that's a story for another day. The S23 Ultra is also going to feature an aluminum frame with Gorilla Glass Victus and an IP68 water and dust resistance rating. Gee, I wonder where we've heard all those specs before. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Personally, I still prefer the design of the S21 Ultra and Samsung is basically putting new parts into the body of the S22 Ultra and calling it the S23 Ultra. I think they've been spending a little too much time with the folks from Apple. With regards to color, we're going to be getting four different options, including Phantom Black, which is unarguably the most important, obviously. There's also going to be other color options like Cotton Flower, Botanic Green, and Mystic Lilac. These names, bruh. Ay, ay, ay. There are most likely also going to be some Samsung exclusive colors, probably like burgundy red or maybe even that nice brown color we got with the S21 Ultra. And as for the display, the S23 Ultra is still going to feature a 6.8 inch Quad HD Plus AMOLED display with a refresh rate of 120Hz. And the S23 Ultra is also going to be the only smartphone in the lineup to feature the LTPO display technology, which basically means that the refresh rate of the display can go all the way down to 1Hz when the display is stuck or inactive and go all the way up to 120 hertz when the display is in use. I think Samsung tried to claim this display technology on the S22 Ultra as well. However, it was discovered that the display could only go down to 40 hertz and not 1 hertz. One thing that impressed a lot of people when it came to the iPhone 14 Pro Max was the fact that the peak brightness could go all the way up to 2000 nits making it the smartphone with the brightest display. However, seeing as Samsung are the major suppliers of display to Apple and they are the most significant authority when it comes to smartphone display technology, if they decide that they don't want your displays to outshine their own, then uh, sorry, you shall not pass. You shall not pass! What this means is, there are rumors going around that the display on the S23 Ultra will be brighter than that found on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. But there are other rumors stating that the S23 Ultra's peak brightness will remain around 1750 nits. Whether the display brightness goes up to 2000 nits or not, I really don't think it's that important of an upgrade to be honest. On the other hand, something that is most likely going to be a very significant upgrade 
is the fact that the S23 Ultra is going to release globally with the Snapdragon chipset. Last year and the years leading up to that, Samsung notoriously released two versions of their flagship smartphones, a Snapdragon version and an Exynos version, which performed significantly worse when it came to managing heat and battery optimization. I think this is the right move for Samsung as it is going to significantly reduce or even completely eradicate the complaints that a lot of Samsung users have made over the years about paying the same amount of money for a worse performing device. Shipping the S23 series with only the Snapdragon chipsets will definitely be a game changer and I believe it will convince a lot of people who are in the market for a new smartphone in places other than the United States to give Samsung a try once again, seeing as they will be receiving the much better Snapdragon versions. The flagship Snapdragon chipset we can expect for this year is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. But of course, Samsung being Samsung will never settle for the bare minimum. So the S23 Ultras will be shipping with a custom version of the Snapdragon chipset called the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile platform for Galaxy. This custom chipset is said to allegedly provide a higher clock speed than the base Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And coupled with 12 gigabytes of RAM, the S23 Ultra will definitely be one of the best performing smartphones of 2023 or at least early 2023 as later in the year we're most likely going to get the snapdragon 8 gen 2 plus on the gaming smartphones and so on and so forth but we all know samsung can't be trusted with just benchmark results as they falsified information regarding that in the past so i guess you're just gonna have to subscribe to the channel and hopefully i will be able to get my hands on the s23 ultra and we can actually put it through its paces. When it comes to storage, the S23 Ultra will start from 256 gigabytes of storage and will most likely go up to one terabyte. And I know a lot of people might not understand why someone might need a smartphone that has up to a terabyte of internal storage. But my S21 Ultra had an internal storage capacity of 512 gigabytes and I was rapidly filling it up as I used it as my primary camera for all my YouTube videos and other content that I made. And of course, I wasn't able to get rid of all the videos that I shot or there were a couple of them that I wanted to keep. So when I upgraded to the Z Fold 3, I had to get the 512 gigabyte version as well. And hopefully I won't fill this one up because it's gonna be a very expensive upgrade if that happens. And moving on to what is arguably the biggest change with the S23 Ultra, Samsung is allegedly going to include a 200 megapixel sensor on this device. Honestly, the first time I saw this, I was like, Samsung, calm down. Size doesn't matter. That's what she said. <laughs> Neither does megapixel count. Relax. I mean, a regular smartphone display is anywhere from 2 to 4 megapixels. A 4K TV display is about 8 megapixels. So hypothetically, photos taken with the new 200 megapixel sensor should be about 25 times more pixel dense than a 4K TV display. Sounds like Samsung is trying to overcompensate for something. I mean, photos taken on the S22 Ultra were plenty sharp enough, and it's definitely one of the best smartphones out there when it comes to optical zoom. So what's the need for more megapixels? And let's not even talk about how low light performance just might get worse because of all those extra megapixels and the inevitable increase in shutter lag because of how long it's going to take to process all of those 200 megapixel photos. There is a silver lining, however, as with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset, there is going to be a new image signal processor that might help improve image quality as well as video quality and maybe even help out with the shutter lag. The ultra wide camera remains at 12 megapixels and as with the S22 Ultra, we have two telephoto lenses, one of them for three times optical zoom and the other periscope lens for 10 times optical zoom for all those moon shots that everyone seems to have forgotten about. Now let's talk about video quality. Samsung introduced 8K recording at 24 FPS on the S22 Ultra and now we can expect to be able to shoot 8K videos at 30 FPS, meaning there shouldn't be as much of a crop when recording videos and the videos should be ever so slightly smoother. Okay, so all this talk about cameras brings me to a very important aspect of the S23 Ultra and that is battery capacity. I mean, it's not new information that the more you use the cameras on a smartphone, the faster your battery drains. So if Samsung really wants people to explore and enjoy all the new camera features, they need to have made some improvements to the battery, right? The 5000 mAh battery that came with the S22 Ultra was barely enough for some people to get through the entire day as screen on times ranged anywhere from 4.5 hours to perhaps 6 hours, which wasn't really great for a 2022 flagship. 
especially considering the stellar battery life of the iPhones. But the folks at Samsung thought, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So the S23 Ultra is going to come with a 5000 mAh battery just like it did in the S21 Ultra and the S22 Ultra. There is hope, however, as the new chipset might be more efficient at managing power, so we might be able to get a bit more screen on time with the S23 Ultra. And the fact that all models will come with the Snapdragon chipset means it'll be easier to measure battery performance across the board. And of course, Samsung is not going to include a charging brick in the box. Those days are long gone, thanks to a certain fruit company that everyone loves to copy from. Nevertheless, the S23 Ultra will have a max charging speed of 45 watts and a wireless charging speed of 15 watts. Samsung got left behind in the charging speed game a long time ago, but eh, we'll take what we can get. Features such as reverse wireless charging, ultra wideband support, Bluetooth 5.3, and even Wi-Fi 6E are also present on the S23 Ultra. Anyway, let's get into the main reason I don't think a lot of people are going to buy the S23 Ultra. And that is the price. Seeing as Samsung basically recycled the design of the S22 Ultra and just threw in a couple of new parts, I figured they might have saved a bit of money on research and development and probably passed down the savings onto the consumers. Nope, I was wrong. The S23 Ultra is going to start out at the high, high price of $1,200. And honestly, if I had that kind of money, which I don't, I would be thinking of getting something more noteworthy, like one of the foldables, albeit maybe refurbished, or probably a discounted S22 Ultra. And with the money you saved, you could definitely afford to get some accessories like a Galaxy Watch or maybe some Galaxy Buds. It does seem like there are a couple of new software features that will be coming with the S23 Ultra, like Samsung Daily, which is a rebranded version of Samsung Free which is also a less interesting version of Google Discover. It's news. It's basically just news. But also, we can expect to get some improved accessibility features as well, such as a better voice-to-text engine. And honestly, if it's anywhere close to the speech-to-text you get on the Pixel devices, then it will be a game changer. However, we'll have to wait and see if it actually delivers. Okay, so after listening to all of this, if you're still watching, Let's answer the question that has most likely been on your mind for the entire video. Should you buy the S23 Ultra? Well, if you're someone who absolutely needs to have the latest and greatest hardware, then yeah, internally, it's a pretty significant upgrade over the S22 Ultra with the new chipset and the new camera hardware. You might also want to consider it if you live in a region where all you got were the Exynos versions and seeing as that won't be the case anymore, this could be a good chance to get a Snapdragon Samsung flagship. Or if you're someone who just maybe wants the extra one or two hours of screen on time you might get with the new chipset, then yeah, I guess it could be a good purchase as well. Honestly, if you're already rocking the S22 Ultra and maybe even the S21 Ultra, I don't think you would want to upgrade to the S23 Ultra unless you absolutely need that 200 megapixel camera, a stylus, and the new chipset. Otherwise, I would highly recommend getting the Snapdragon version of the S22 Ultra. But let me know what you think in the comment section below and you can check out any of my other videos 